Hello and welcome back to the channel. So your GameCube won't read discs anymore even after cleaning it and you just have to get in another play session of your favorite game. This is a somewhat common problem with a straightforward solution so let's fix that. You're going to need a few items before you start though and you will need some previous soldering skills, preferably replacing surface mounted caps but we'll get into that in a little bit. A game bit screwdriver is a must for these case screws and you'll also need a smaller Phillips screwdriver for the inner housing parts. Some IPA and cotton swabs for cleaning, solder flux and an iron are also a must as well as picking up some new replacement caps for your optical drive. These can be found in many locations online or sourced individually on Digikey or Mauser, but I like to buy them in kits. Links in the description as always. Optionally, you may need a good pair of tweezers, a multimeter, or a flush cutter for this job too. I would say these are also a must have, but sometimes you just don't need them or don't have access to them. First start by taking out the game bit screws on the bottom of the console. There are four to be exact and this lifts the top of the housing off so you have access to the inner shielding screws. Now there are a lot of screws holding the top shielding in place so let's start on one side and just work your way around. I like to start on the side with the fan assembly and work clockwise around the unit until you get to the front. The front panel will pop loose by prying up on each of the side pin clips. Just reach into the center once it's free and gently rock the ribbon cable out of position. Then you have four more screws and two plates to remove from the front before the top assembly can finally be removed from the base of the console. Pull up to remove the top from the connector underneath and set the base parts off to the side since we will only be working on the top portion. This section of course has another six small screws holding the shielding in place that need to be removed so we can access the optical drive circuit board underneath. There will be another four screws three cable connections, and two wires soldered onto this board that will all need to be removed too. It really doesn't matter what order these are removed in, but just be careful when removing the ribbon cables since these can be damaged easily. But congrats, you finally have the circuit board out. All 10 of these caps on the board are what we are going to be replacing. And this is where your surface mounted soldering skills come into play. If you haven't done surface mounted swaps before, here are a few tips. There are really two ways to remove these and feel free to use either depending on your comfortability. The first method is to heat one side of the cap pad while carefully bending it out of the way with your tweezers. You may need to add a little extra flux to these pads to be able to do this, but once they are bent one direction, flip the board around and do the same process to the other side. You're basically wiggling the caps out of place while heating the pads. The downside of this method is you can't see under the caps, so you don't know if the caps are free of the pads or not. And if you're pulling them aggressively to one side, you could tear a pad completely off or at least pull it away from the board, which is a pain to fix. The second method is my preferred choice, and that's just to cut the caps off and clean up what's left afterwards. Take a pair of flush cutters and position it so it cuts completely through one of the inner cap legs. These normally have an indentation towards the bottom of the base and slide the cutters in about three quarters of the way to cut it. The first cut will get it free and the second will remove it completely by severing the second leg. Just don't pull up from the board if you're not cutting completely through since that can cause the same issue with the pads as the first method. Then go back and remove the remainder of the top part of the cap and the black base with your cutters or some tweezers. You'll most likely have leftover cap legs still attached to the board, but this can be quickly cleaned up with a hot iron to remove those last few bits off the pads. I also like to add a little new solder to each of these pads afterwards just to make sure there's plenty there to hold the new caps in place to. Give it a quick cleaning with some IPA and you should be ready to install the new ones. I like to use the numbered list on Console 5's wiki for the caps, but there are several lists online to show where the new caps all need to go. Here's a quick reference for where everything goes regardless of what site you might use but the install typically goes much faster than the removal. I like to hold each cap in place while heating one pad, then flip the board around to heat the opposite pad to secure it down. I will typically go back to the first pad just to make sure it is well attached and reheat it while holding the cap in place. This is just to make sure that it isn't tilted in any way and it's soldered as flat as possible to the board. But go around the board until each new cap is in place and inspect to make sure all of them are installed properly. If you have extra flux on the board, now would be a good time to clean it off as well. After you're done with the new installs, now is the time to test out the board and if necessary, adjust the laser potentiometer settings as well. But first, partial reassembly. Drop the board back into the shielding and reattach the ribbon cables. I found it slightly easier to do this without the screws in place right away too. But the screws are still required for testing, so before doing anything else, make sure to pop those back in too. Then solder down the last two wires and make sure all the cables are properly seated before moving on to testing. If needed before testing, take a cotton swab and carefully wipe the laser eye with some IPA to clean it. Then put the upper shielding on the lower section of the console and seat the laser eye assembly onto the main base to test it out. You don't need to do a full reassembly yet and can test the console without the top of the housing as long as you're careful. Just note that the rear sensor needs to be depressed to tell the system that the lid is closed and if your unit starts spinning and playing games right away, you're all set. You can reassemble and you have a good working unit. If not, 
here are some other things to consider. First, take note if the disc is spinning and if the laser eye illuminates. If the laser eye doesn't come on at all and you've already checked your connections, you may need to replace the laser altogether. If the laser eye turns on and moves searching for data but the disc doesn't spin, don't worry, you may still be able to fix it by adjusting the pot on the board. If the unit spins and it just isn't reading discs yet, that's a good sign that you're close to the correct ohm value, so let's adjust the pot to get it just right. To adjust the pot, remove the laser assembly again and turn your multimeter onto the resistance setting. You want to touch the probes to each side of the potentiometer on the circuit board, and the right side of the probe needs to be touching the lower solder connection for it to read properly. The ohm value to adjust this potentiometer varies depending on who you might be asking, but it should be around 450 to 600 for the 001 models, and about 150 to 250 for the 101 models. To adjust the value, take your small screwdriver and ever so slightly turn the center of the pot and retest the two points again with your probes. You want to do this in increments of about 25 to 50 ohms at a time and retest it again. If you notice the disc starting to spin when it wasn't previously, then you know you're going in the right direction. Continue to adjust the pot until you get it just right and it's starting to read discs consistently, then you can begin reassembly. Now sadly, this won't always work for every unit. Sometimes lasers will go bad and even after tweaking them, they may not start due to this. Through my own testing, I've found about 80% of the time replacing the caps on the drive board and tweaking the pot will get the systems working again though. This number may be different for others, but this is just my personal experience from completing several of these. Optionally, since the unit is already open, you can also replace the clock battery attached next to the controller ports. If you'd like a quick tutorial on how to do that, check out this video right here. But the reassembly for these is just as easy as the disassembly. Just pop all the screws and panels back in place in the order that you removed them. Slide the top cover on, screw down the last four bottom case screws, and you're done. Now you have a fully functioning system again. Enjoy it! If this video helped you, please leave a like and a comment down below. And if you're interested in additional tips and fixes for your other systems, be sure to check out my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next fix.